Project OWL builds connectivity devices for extreme environments, many of which that have been devastated by natural disasters. The purpose of Space Ducks is to test several communications and sensor technology payloads on our new device that we'll be attaching to an atmospheric balloon. And we want to prove that we can continue operating those devices in a very extreme environment. Project OWL arrived in San Luis Obispo, California to meet with a group of Cal Poly students and professors to complete final assembly on these payloads and then launch them up to high altitude. Evan and Jack McGinnis were looking at launch and release locations. Um, and what's interesting is we have some control outside of the impact the climate will make on our trajectory. We have control over our, certainly our launch location, but then also control over our landing location, um, mostly due to the ascent rate of the balloon, how much helium we put inside, and the descent rate of the balloon based on which parachute we choose. So we're going to be launching just off the 41 and the 5 in a little town called Avenal just because the flight track that we've predicted has a landing zone just right in the Central Valley, which is exactly where we want to be landing. That's where we target all of our um, simulations for because it's crosshatch farmland. There's nobody out there. It's pr probably the safest place for landing and super accessible by car so we can track down our uh, payload really easily once it lands. So our payload consists of an outer shell that we've 3D printed. The inner walls of that shell, we have insulation that we're cutting to fit nicely. Our internal payload design is three layers. We're calling it our layer cake. The middle layer of this layer cake is where our SATCOM uh, module is called our rock block and our custom project outboard, the quacker board sits and that's where all our sensors are integrated and that's where that's the main brain of our computer. Uh, right now we are working on getting the uh, micro SD card that is on our sensor hat integrated with our full system. Uh, we uh, had to do a lot of the code ourselves on this uh, because uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico is pretty brand new and so there's not a lot of uh, uh, code available to um, interface with it and so um, we uh, are working on that, yeah. We're 17 hours out, we're extremely excited. So far, everything seems to be working. Uh, we have yet to complete and fully test a payload. So it, it looks like tomorrow morning we'll be launching our first payload uh, up to about 100,000 feet, 30 kilometers. This afternoon, evening, we're going to put a payload outside and run an entire uh, flight mimic experiment running all comms, all sensors, transmitting all that data up to the cloud, watching telemetry and analytics in our software systems. So on the first launch day, we went to our launch location and we immediately started prepping our payload. We took our electronics, put them inside of our payloads to make sure they were all working. Batteries were connected, cameras were all hooked up. Another team was preparing the balloon. Uh, the balloon needs a specific amount of helium to predict our landing location later in the day. Like, as low as you can, yeah. right next to the car. Now that we've got, it's, yeah. holding, it's, it's holding itself up. Yeah, we're just... Okay, cool. 
So it was actually a difficult launch because it was kind of later in the day and there was so much wind outside. We had to be careful for a balloon not to pop because you know there are trees around, cars, barbed wire fences. We don't want this balloon to pop before it actually even launched. So we took it slow, we waited for the wind to calm down and then as soon as possible we just launched the balloon up in the air. of the weekend, the most stressful launch that I've experienced before. Conditions are really windy, but we had a great team on top of it. Everyone was doing their part. It all came together perfectly, and luckily we were able to get it up just maybe 10 minutes behind schedule, but she's up there, look closely. We've got set up here on the two screens, the Project OWL data management system. We're receiving packets every couple of minutes with all of our sensor data and hopefully our GPS data. Sometimes we get GPS data, sometimes we don't. But every time we receive GPS coordinates, we plug it into our Google Earth program to update the location, compare it to where we expect it to be, and also analyze where we need to be so that we're there to receive it when it comes down. So while the space deck was in flight, we were consistently receiving telemetry data. But about five minutes before landing, at 2,000 meters altitude, we lost all communications. We do not know why. We searched hours in the dark, but made the tough decision to go home and construct another payload for the next day. The first space deck of the week, a kilo one, was never found. So we are about 15 minutes out from our launch location. We're making the final preparations on the payload. We're finalizing the predictions for our flight path. Um, and as soon as we get there, we're gonna hop out of the car, rig everything together, fill the balloon, and send her up. Now we're in day two. Whatever happened day one, we put it behind us, learn from it, and then we're executing on our new payload, Phoenix. We got to a launching site or earlier than yesterday, you know, we're being more efficient and we got everything ready, payload set up, the weather balloon set up, and we have it in our hands and we're about to deploy it how to launch it and just when we let go next you know we hear a thud and the payload just hit the ground we see the arms wailing a little bit and we were just so upset we're like oh my god what well, based on what happened this is pretty bad but luckily the good thing is we're still getting data so, so that means nothing happened to like the software is still working so we just kept on going forward whatever happened happened we still getting data let's keep going with our mission we packed everything up went to the landing site, the approximate landing site, and we unloaded everything, got the Yagi antenna, and we're still getting live data. So this was exciting. And as we're waiting, waiting, we see this LED in the light, in the sky, just coming down. And that was actually our payload from the, our LEDs. 
and we just got out the car and we just ran towards wherever uh, ran towards where the payload was and actually took us to this almond farm so when we got there we're running we're running and we see this we find this LED light in the tree and when we look at it it was actually a payload that landed on a tree Found the payload, it just Let's landed go. in this tree. We've been running around this field for like 15, 20 minutes. Probably just ran half a mile, like a mile and a half. Yeah. To find this thing. And here it is. Got it. Find the balloon, parachute, payload, got it all. Cameras. At this point, we've been working on this for the past week, no sleep, and both launches have problems. At the very least, we were able to get the temperature, pressure, accelerometer, magnetometer, and GPS all communicating over LoRa to our ground station. This is our last deployment day, and not only is this our last chance, uh, we're launching two balloons at the same time, which we've never done before. This is our, our last shot, and we had to put everything on the line. So our first goal is just to get the media. We've had three launches and um, we haven't been able to get any media. Cameras disabled on the second launch and the first launch was not retrieved. Number two, uh, getting these devices to talk to each other. So we have another payload, a little more simplified. Um, and basically it's gonna be flying side by side with this one. And the goal is to get the, the, the little one talking to the big one talking to the ground and so we'll be able to see that and hopefully pick up each of them directly and then the relay between the two so that's our goal for today Scrubbing some data right now, comparing it to our actual track to make sure that it is gonna land where we think it's gonna land. And we are gonna go there right now. We're chasing it. it. We're chasing it right now. We're in balloon country, baby.
All right, so we're here in Central Valley, California. Um, there is nothing around us. We barely even have cellular signal. We actually caught with the naked eye our balloons and we saw them pop uh, without any type of binoculars or anything. So it should be about 30 minutes until they're coming down. Uh, they were, last time we got SATCOM data, about 25 kilometers high, very cold, negative 30 Celsius on the exterior.